channels, me and Andrew are going to today. We're going to look at some CEF engines that picked a finger dabber a couple days ago. We're going to check out the model compared to the uh, prototype and see what's missing what's not there. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, please like and subscribe. All right, just got back my car. I got out the Uber there. It's, uh, sometimes, you know, you get something random Uber driver that has a, you know, a nice car. It's something different than we usually are riding in, if you're wondering. So once again, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and a like. And um, hopefully you can stick around and see some more videos that you like. A recent release from Athens Genesis. These are the... ES4400. So I got into CSX. I got into CEFX. And I got another CEFX. So uh, got these here. I eventually like to do a uh, renumbering here for these local modes to make it NSs. And also just keep my CSX. I like this buying two scheme. So let's open up the box and see what you get inside. So we got this guy here on a spinning table. Let's unbox it. Got your at the Genesis, that beautiful blue there with that gold. It's pretty cool. That's what I like about it. Take it out. See, we got, of course, we got paperwork here, as usual. Spool apart diaphragm or diagram. Let's tell you what every uh, part number here that you need if you want to reorder it. It's pretty cool. Of course, come with your limited warranty information here. You got your diesel operator's manual and sound god. And of course, you got a fly here. Take a look at this guy here. Nice, was it cobalt blue, I believe it is? Also inside the pouch here, get another plow there, and some other uh, roll bearing caps there. And the like, lift rings here. So let's compare the CEFX engine here. I got the 1002, and we got a 1048. So off the back, it's all the same locomotive, but very different. So on the head in here, we got the high number boards here. This one had the nose mounted number boards. And they both had the same handrails above the windshield wipers uh, with that black gasket going around. Pretty much the same thing here. Coming down, also had the grab irons here, sand full of hatches, both there. When you get to the nose, they both have the headlights. But the door is different. This has no window, this has a window. This here has a grab iron here. This one doesn't, but have a sticker and it does hasn't. Both same style here as you will find a UP and stuff specific locomotives. Also have the pilot mounted dish lights here. Now the center seals are different. This guy's gray, this guy's black. And with the plows here, they come with different arrays of uh, plows. This one come with an extra plow. This uh 1002, but the 1048 has two extra plows here. So uh you got three plows and you know you got two here for this guy here. Here we have the local moves on top of each other. I can see the similar that uh this guy here it has a touch sun shade, this guy doesn't. Coming down, this has a different paneling for the air conditioning system. Now you look this truck, there's nothing going to center bearing, but you look at this guy here, that has a speed recorder there. Now look at the paneling here. It's different. Grab irons in this guy here. This one doesn't have it. Come across you have your uh, diamond and brake uh, vents there. Both have their handrails. Step there. Come across the, the lane is a little bit different here on the locomotive, but you, the same is for the fuel inlet and digital readout screen or the same location here. Come across. You do have detail here for your traction motor cables on both a locomotive. They both sport a uh, metal chain here. 
come that the red this long hood here now the right ear section now you do have see-through right or greater great stare and all the labeling appears to be the uh, same taking a look on the engine side of the locomotive that uh, we have different fonts this guy here is a little bit bigger it's a little smaller there it is on the same side also and this has sub shades on this side and this one doesn't but you still get your mirror and a small mirror here also so you can look down at the stuff to see if your conductor or brake man or whoever it is trying to get on the engine here come down to trucks there appears to be the same uh, trucks there uh, come back here to the locomotive fuel readouts it's still at the same uh, display uh, electrical panel door it appears to be the same um, but yeah the labeling is still, it's a little bit different here on the locomotive labeling look appears to be the same come across this uh, labeling here same but it's different between the two and you have this fire stanger logo here on this locomotive and this one uh, doesn't have a bit Looking at the rear of this locomotive that we have, you know, same but different locomotive. Then here we have a high fill, sand filled hatch here. This one guy here is in the body in the middle. Then you have your grab irons here. This one has a small grab iron and this has a long grab iron there. Come down the same handrails, stanchions, uh, more of the same here as far as the grab iron goes. And you got MB hoses, got the three here, the three cluster, but it comes different. We have two of the brake pipe hoses here, and this guy uh, has one. And if you can see, on the walkway, the walkway tread is here, texture. So what we have here, we got a GPS dome here, you got this St. Clair antenna on this guy here. You have black labeling, and you have white labeling here, but as far as the latches goes horn exhaust and ready goes is all the same let's compare the model to the prototype here we got the date of this uh picture was taken back in 10 13 2009 in denver colorado so let's get this lined up as best as we can there we go let's take a detail both of them okay starting off here in the front now of course you have the decals start with three decals here you have your flag holder you got one two that's there in correct location you have your builder's plate there which is here also in the locomotive let's see look at the correct vent there for under the cab for the auto air brake uh, components at there uh, window wise you got the oval window there you got your mirror and a small one there also got your windshield there also got that dome up top coming across now you see here we got the stickers a little different on the vent near the diamond brakes so the stickers on the model isn't here on the prototype but on the prototype it could have fallen off or blown off or came off you know come down the long hood look at a good position here for this uh vent the x panel in here on the locomotive it's not as prominent but it's there as it would be on the prototype all right come across a stencil label there on that door there it's here on the model but on the prototype it's a little further up as it's subjective the horn the exhaust the radiator section the two long vents at the top and the long shirt long 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 a uh, short guy and uh, I guess a long guy here as they uh, match the prototype very well. Come down here to the uh, air, air system component, looks good. Like the label appears to be in the correct location. Come down to the main reservoirs, looks like in good position there. Yeah, a little divot there, looks pretty good. And your fuel readouts, digital sight glass there, emergency set off. And the inlet there appears to be in the correct order. Come down to the trucks. Uh, you do have your strut on the first and the last. Uh, now we got a picture of this uh, locomotive back in 2005, 2006, and 2016. So there's a lot of photos in between there. So I just picked uh, both ones to illustrate this uh, 
comparison. Now I'm coming this 2005 one here. Come down. You got your GPS dome, which is on top. Now later on, it does have a sunshade here. Follow down here. You got the road name or road number, the font pair to be correct. And you have your detail here as a uh, vent. You got the engine destination here. You got other vents here on a lo locomotive that's under the conductor side. Come down, got the jack and pad detail. Got the truck light here. Got the toilet outlet. And you have your clusters here for the MU cables here. To cut them in and cut them out, which is you can see that on the model. So it's pretty good on the model on the prototype. Come down, uh, your trucks have the appropriate trucks here with no struts on the lead uh, trucks. Then you got your uh, steel bell here. Come down to your fuel relay. You got your uh, emergency shut off here, a digital readout, an inlet, a view sight glass here, and other detail that's along the tank of the uh, model. Coming across here, you got your on top of your uh, electric cabinet. You got two vents here, which it is on the model. And you have a label here on under the radius here. A label here, three on the side panels here also. Coming across this hood here. More label on here, detail. Now, um, the label on this locomotive is uh, different from what it is back in 2005, but we'll show that later. Coming across here, you have all your Stinson that appears to be correct. And you got your uh, colored, darkened grills here, as this is a per prototype. Now you come down to this uh, rear truck, they do have a chain here, as it is appears on the prototype. And the first and last uh, truck has struts with it, as it appears to be in the prototype. So swing over to 2006 here. You see the label a little bit better. But if you go to 2016 model, now you can see that it doesn't have a, it has a, the model doesn't have a label, but the engine does. Let me just go back to 2006 six here. It doesn't have it on the locomotive. So this locomotive between, let's say, 2005, 2016, a lot of things changes, but the most part, it is the same locomotive. If you're real iffy by having the stenciling in the wrong location, just get a data sheet and replace them. Taking a look at this locomotive back in 2009, uh, we come up top, we have the appropriate uh, lettering here for the high number board. Uh, you have your white color grab bar and steer as it is appears on the model. Uh, coming down here, you do have your uh, grab bar next to the door with this uh, red and white sequence. Uh, pattern there as it is for, for a prototype. Come down more, uh, we got your pallet mounted dish lights there. Come under, you have your stents in here on the bottom of the center sill or the anti-climb. And of course you got your three clusters for your MBU cables there. Um, more just the stents in here, just gonna point out that this has the three point connection and the model doesn't, but it does have that red label there on top. So once again, you know, it's close, but it depends on what model year you have, it's gonna be a little different. So if you like that type of stencil, just add it to it. All right, we'll be taking a look at this CFX 1048 back in July 9, 2005. Come look at the prototype here against the model. Then you see up top, you do have your icicle antenna arrangements here. And you also have that grab bar and all the way up top. Come down more, you got the white grab irons here that protects the windshield wipers. Uh, you have more uh, grab irons here. Appears to be the correct orientation. Come down, the door has a window as it is for prototype with a number of boards in the nose. And you have this white sticker here as it is on, on the prototype. Come down, you have your pilot mounted uh, dish lights here. And also have look like an extra uh, electrical connection here or jump recorder can be plugged in here. Uh, coming down, to the bottom of the pilot, you do have your labeling that is uh, appropriate to the uh, prototype there. And you do have white handrails with the appropriate st stirrups. And you, if you can see it there, maybe you can see it or not, but it does have two air hoses on the bottom per prototype. That's for the brake pipe. Taking a look at this uh, locomotive back in 2011. Come here and take a look at the detail which we have our uh, 
trucks here. They have the front and last uh, stress steer on the axles. Looks pretty uh, pretty good there. Coming across now, as per prototype, this uh, had a sun straights and it didn't have it back in 2000, uh, what was it, 2005. So it'll be in 2011 here. So 2005, it still didn't have them. Take a look at the lead of them here, the details, the white stripe. Appears to be in the correct location here throughout the locomotive. Uh, coming down here as the labeling here, you know, appears to be in the correct location. But uh, in time, stuff do get moved. So if you don't like it, once again, always can change it up. But for the most part, in the details, uh, it appears to be very accurate. Now, you can't get this wrong. The label for a fire stamp, you got to have that right. So it's pretty cool. And also the paint on the underframe of the trucks, like the trucks and the tank is black and the car body is uh, blue. And you see all the detail that is here on the locomotive compared to the prototype. So if you didn't see anything that I missed out, please point it out and everything. And uh, this models are pretty accurate to the prototype. I said if you like stenciling changes throughout the years and stuff falls off, stuff can be replaced. So... Pretty much is a good looking locomotive to have and add to your roster. Take a look at a locomotive back in 2014 here. Let's go take a look at what you got. Here you have another um, sticker for a fire extinguisher inside. Also the second one is here. Uh, two steps to come down. Regular grab bar in here, a short one. The other one, the 1002, had a long one there in the rear. So uh, this model is uh, pretty good. They're very accurate to the uh, detail here and stuff. Got them both here on the track. Just check out the lighting feature that comes with the locomotive. So everything's off. Except for the walkway lights there. Block this here for a moment. Check out the brightness of this highlight here. There we go. Now I'm gonna get this lights working. We get F5. There we go. Nice and bright. Then we got the other guy here. Now the cut, the cut on the number boards hit F6. That's how you cut number boards on. So you got lit number boards on here. Also, look here on the bottom. If you can see, it's very faint that you have truck lighting here on the conductor side, on the engine side. It doesn't have it, but you know, of course, it's here the walkway light. So I'll just check out the rear light. Put it in reverse. There you go. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Check the other side here. Just show you there's no other lights on the other side. do the sounds and do the uh, functions here so uh, remember everything's uh, factory I did not change the CVs or the values of them so it still is address the three Let's start them up function here I had it working uh, look like in the video it's a uh, flickering but in uh, actuality it's not flickering it's just the uh, frame rates are different so we're going to put on our disc lights it's going to be on uh, the F5 there we go. so uh, F1 is a uh, bell 
F2 is a horn. F3 is your horn. Now on F4, you know it's a diamond break. But uh, standing still and idle, let's hit that and see what happens. Alright, nothing here. Come down here to uh, cab chatter over the dimmer. Maybe F7. All right, and you got F9 is the alternate mixer there, and we're not gonna touch that. Now we go to F10, and go straight to eight and sand valve. F10. Alright, so I'm going to notch 8 there, hit F10 again and knock it all the way down. Right now, they have settled with F11 uh, as a break, set, and release. Alright, the F13 is going to be a coupler and uncoupling. All right, F14 uh, is going to be a half speed and uh, motion override, momentum override, sorry. So we're not going to touch that. Then we got an F15, we got a handbrake, F15. I'm going to hit it one more time. Now you got an HEP mode on and off, F16, we're going to touch that. Let's go F17 for fuel loading sequence. Now we're going to F18 is uh, general service sequence. Check that out. Okay, not much there. Now F19 is straight to idle. Now touch that. F20 got steam generator or. Uh, HEP generator on and off. I'm not going to use that. And got an F23 here. All aboard. <laughs> there you go, all aboard. All aboard. Then you got lighting, uh, Azurian lighting and F24 and 25 if equipped. You got engine uh, RPMs notch up on 26. Check out 26. Notch one. Notch two. Should be notch three. 
All right, so we're gonna hit it three times, so that's three. That's 27, notch down. Okay. Okay, they're in idle. Now you have emergency stop. Emergency stop. Got a uh, red emergency lights. All right. So if you click, then hit down F twenty seven. It'll shut down the locomotive. So it's starting back up by hitting, I believe, F eight. And no, I'm wrong. F26. There you go. F26. Hit it twice. Alright, so does the uh, start running here. When you went here, uh, vibrations coming from the uh, stands that's that it's an engine singing on so don't mind that vibration also you can see have rotating uh, bearing caps here And it's going on uh, with 28 speed steps here. So that's speed step 10 right there. It's a 15. Uh, let's go on the diamond brick and see how that sounds. Hitting it once, a four. And four again. Get louder. For again, the third time. And four again. That's the fourth time. So there we have it, we have our CVs, we look through the keys from 0 all the way up to uh, 28 there, now let's see what it sounds like, but now we're going to put on the railroad, on the e h railroad, you're going to run around the layout on the locomotives, or well, on the train consist that I got all set up with.